Hey, this is Michael with X Force PC. Austin uh, lives nearby me. He's the guy that created X Plane, and he called me the other day and wanted me to help him test some uh, ways he could improve X Plane's flight model. And as he explains, X Plane does a very nice job calculating uh, the forces that act on a aircraft. Except it doesn't do the greatest job that it could do with calculating what might happen with the fuselage. So. That's what you're going to see here, Austin and, and myself, and I'm basically just driving a car, and he's using the car as a makeshift wind tunnel. And with all experiments, you always start out typically very simple and rudimentary, and then your tests get more and more sophisticated. So, of course, this is the very beginning uh, process that you're seeing here, and that's why you see uh, just sort of a comical, you know, let's see what this thing does in the wind kind of thing. Okay, so I'm sitting in the driver's seat of Austin's Tesla, and he tells me by holding this shaft <laughs> out of the top of his sunroof as I drive will somehow improve X-Plane. Uh, only he knows exactly how. Well, where's the pivot how. point, right? Where is the pivot point of an aerodynamic <laughs> body? If you want to know where the pivot point of an aerodynamic body is, take the body, put it out the roof of a car, make it so it can easily, easily pivot, and then find out where that pivot point is. And we'll gradually pick up the speed. And if the thing is unstable, then we know the pivot point is forwards. Uh, if it's overly stable, we'll know the pivot point is aft. And the pivot point matters because that's where the forces act on the body. And do we care about where the forces act on the body uh, uh, like this in a simulator? You better believe we do. This is where you get the lift and drag and side forces and whatnot on the fuselage of an airplane. So this is a very good little test we're going to run. Okay, you hold while I get in the car for a second. Okay. So what he said. Yeah. All right. All right. It's like very unstable. Yeah. Let's see back here. Okay. And All right. just run me about 15 miles an hour, no faster. We don't need to go fast for this test. And I'll push down on this. Yeah, push. It's a Mercedes. Now you're in neutral. There we go. All right, so now I'm in drive. About 15 miles an hour. 15 miles an hour. Okay, we're right about, right about Why don't you put on your seatbelt so it's not beeping at you? Okay. I like to be able to focus on it and go beep, beep, beep constantly. And it's going to keep doing it until you put your belt on. Uh, sorry, the camera waving around like this. I have to put my seatbelt on. Okay. Okay, so there's your pivot point thing you're working on. Oh, look at that. It's Notice it's staying at... It's like it wants to go into the wind. Yeah, that's fast enough. We don't need any more to see okay. the, the, the aerodynamic forces here. You see, as soon as it starts to go in, it destabilizes. Now I'm going to start by pointing into the wind and let's see if it stays that way. Okay, now I'm going to release it and... Ooh, look at that. Unstable. Okay, slow it down just a little. These are a little higher forces than we need. Okay. It doesn't help a truck has decided to stop it. Okay, this is unstable. Okay, you can stop the car. All right. Stop the car. We're gonna stop the car. Okay, so it's unstable, okay? So what that means is, <laughs> at least this is it bashes me in the head. <laughs> yeah, okay. So what that means is, um, the, uh, the pivot point is actually uh, a little farther forward, okay? Huh. Now I cannot move this pole forward right now. It'll take about an, a 30 minutes or so of work to get it reinstalled. So I, you know, I need the pivot point to move forwards, yeah. but I can't move it forward. It's going to have time to do that. So watch what I'm going to do. The next best thing. Whoop. You're going to make it longer. Oh, yeah. Now yeah. this is effectively do that again. forwards. I wasn't, wasn't video on that. Okay. So. All right. And many people will be attracted to this. You see, you just yeah. make it longer. So, um. If only okay. that worked with other things. All right. So, <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, now what I'm going to do, now that we've made the thing longer, the pivot point is effectively, effectively farther up, isn't it? I don't want it to uh, flip, you know, to lift up out of the, the little shaft here and fly away. So, we'll just put this little guy in here to make sure it doesn't zip up and fly away on us. Okay. All right. I'm ready for about so, it's the miles second test. You see, with as a you longer see, the, the pivot shaft point is effectively farther forwards because we made the shaft longer. Let's see how it does. All right, 10 miles an hour. Mm, interesting. 
Oop. 15. Oop. Oh, now it's going sideways. Oop. So what does that mean? It means that uh, the pivot point or the aerodynamic center of an airplane fuselage is farther forward than I thought. Whoa, look but at that. But it's doing we... better than last time. Exactly, it's doing better, but we haven't found the pivot. The, so the you gotta make it yet. longer again? Exactly, you gotta make it longer again because it keeps pulling off to the side. All gotta right. Make it longer again. We're okay, gonna pause the, the video and Let's make it park. longer. Okay. So you've made your shaft longer for the second time. Yeah, I didn't know my shaft needed to be this long. But what this does is effectively move the pivot point forwards. Okay, I'm ready for about 15, 20 miles an hour. Let's see if this thing is stable now. And whenever it's stable, we'll know that's the pivot point. And whatever the pivot point is, is the aerodynamic center of the fuselage. Look at that. Why don't you get just a little more speed to make sure okay. that, uh, not a lot more, a little more. We're at 18. Okay. All right. I'm going to point it into the wind to give us a 100% chance of, and just make sure you don't crash the car. Okay. Do we have any, do we have any crosswind though? It's negligible. Negligible. There's like no wind today. It's ne if there is any, it's so small you can't even see. Right, as soon as I point it into the wind, it whoosh, goes off to the side. Look at that. It's absolutely reliable and consistent. I point it to the wind, I let go, and woo, it goes off to the side. In other words, the pivot point is even forwards. And that pivot point is critical because it's where the force acts on and the vehicle. How do you know it's not actually further back? Because if it was, if the pivot point is further back, the thing would flip around and do a full 180. Oh, okay. It's a weather vane. Gotcha. The question is, how forward do I have to mount it? Okay, so now we have to end the experiment because I've used all the length that I've got. And since I've used all the length that I've got and it's still not enough, I got to cut my, uh, my support out of here, move it forward, and try again tomorrow. So we're done All today, right. we'll try again tomorrow, and uh, we'll get more accurate results. Austin using some high-tech tape. tape. The kind you can only find at the Everywhere. store. <laughs> Working on his... Playing with my rocket. Rocket thing. For making X plane better. Or more accurate. Yeah, we're gonna find where the uh, where this rocket wants to pivot. We're gonna find the uh, center of pressure. Center of pressure. Center that, of pressure. Okay, that's what we're trying to determine. And, and with that, we can determine. Uh, I can make the fuselage model more accurate in X-plane. The wing model in X-plane is already great. The fuselage model in X-plane is unquestionably the weak part. Now, question: The fuselage model is the weak part, and there's a reason for it. Everybody documents wings. Nobody documents fuselages. So we've been going up and down on a main, a fairly big road with this rocket looking thing hanging out the window. And so far, the police have not been called. They, they may have been called. Oh, they haven't found us. But they haven't caught up with us. <laughs> you can't say they haven't been called. That's true. You'd be shocked that they haven't been called. Anyway. Austin's making his rocket longer, or his fuselage longer, and um, then we're going to go back out. Oh, his wife just chimed in and said she wished that worked for everything. <laughs> you probably couldn't hear her in the background. All right. So we're going to go back out and drive up and down the road and freak people out some more. Hey, so we uh, went back out. We rode up and down the road some more with the fuselage hanging out the window. I can't say Austin got the definitive answers that he needed, but he got answers and it's data and it's moving the ball forward. And we may ultimately have to go out and hold some more missile-like objects out of the window to get the final answer. But I thought you might find it interesting to see uh, how simplistic the process is at the very beginning before it becomes more and more sophisticated. And if we only had a wind tunnel, you know, we wouldn't have to do this, but I hear those are kind of expensive.